Good evening, and welcome to Camelot Castle. Beauty comes in many forms, and tonight it is our great pleasure to introduce to you a man whose exploration in the field of music, which is one of the forms through which we receive the concepts and ideas of beauty, is extraordinary. John is probably England's greatest living harpist. He's been a friend of Camelot Castle for many years since its earliest beginnings. And it is our great pleasure to present his work and his discoveries to you this evening. John Dalton. My name is John Dalton, I play the harp, and as well as playing music for many years, I've also been extremely interested in what music actually is. When we consider all the arts, drama, sculpture, novel writing, um, painting, and music, they can all touch us, but music has a quality that the others do not have. When we think about it, music can affect people of all ages. It can even affect babies in the womb. It can affect people who are in catatonic states. It can speak to you whether you understand the language of the music, where it came from or not. The difference is that with all the other arts, the ability to form mental images is necessary, but that's not the case with music. It affects people directly in their feelings and often in their will as well. So music can give you energy or it can make you want to relax. It can put you in a sensuous mood, a sleepy mood, or it might make you march if it was military music. Whatever it is, its effect is direct and infinitely variable. So what is music? Well, let us think. In fact, there are three types of sounds that meet our ears. Yes, just three. The first is the sound produced by every physical object. Anything that's physical can be induced to produce a sound. The floor. And when we tap something, we hear a sound. And the sound tells us something about the inner nature of the material that we are touching, tapping, knocking. So all physical matter produces sound. The second category, really, is utterance. All living beings produce utterances of some sort and for the ancients this was a sign that there was a being with a soul so souls have voices when we hear someone speak or sing we know that we are in the presence of something somebody with a soul be it animal or human so think of all the forms of utterance that we are able to hear We have sound, we have utterance. 
And thirdly, we have tone. The tones, which are not found in nature. You see, with all the other arts, the painters, the dramatists, the writers of novels, they find their situations in the world around them and however much they change them to suit the artistic purposes, the, as it were, the sources, the archetypes are found in the world. But that's not the case with music. Whereas a painter can go outside and paint a landscape or paint an imaginary landscape, the, the musician, the composer, cannot go and listen to the music of nature. No, music comes from within us. And from the point of view of the ancients, we here are presented with the fact that man is a threefold being, that we have a body, a soul and a spirit. The body we share with the physical earth and everything with body can produce sound. Everything with a soul can produce an utterance, language of some sort. And thirdly, there is the spiritual realm from which emerges music. So the laws of music, which of course are very mathematical, are a spiritual phenomenon. And although science, modern science, can analyse a musical piece more thoroughly than it can possibly analyse a novel or a sculpture, we can show all the details of music in terms of its amplitude, its, its melodies, its pitches, its frequencies, and yet the mystery of what makes one piece of music touch your heart and another piece not, those mysteries cannot be uncovered by scientific analysis. <laughs> So we have these three elements of sound, utterance and tone, musical tone. And one of the reasons that the harp is considered the music of the angels is that the angels are considered as spiritual beings, okay, purely spiritual. We human beings have a spirit, a soul and a body and we can make music. And the ancients spoke about listening to the music of the spheres. And the angels were said to produce beautiful music. The harp is an interesting instrument because it is a very simple instrument. Very simple indeed. It is just strings stretched in space. The piano is a much later development of the harp and far more complicated with its hammer mechanism and so forth. The harp is extremely simple, you just touch strings in space. Now, you are hearing here the minimum of matter. You've just got these tiny, these strings, which are not very large in material terms, in space, stretched in this triangular or heart-shaped form and you, all you hear is a pure tone. And in the case of the harp, you can't put vibrato into the tones. It's just a pure, straight note. And that lifts it, in a funny sort of way, into the spiritual realm. Because if I was to sing to you using a lot of vibrato, which is typical of the voice, you would see what I mean. If I sing, I love you, baby, I can't live without you. I need you, baby, I can't last another day without you. Okay, you hear all the yearnings of my soul there, all my passionate feelings, which is very much an issue of the soul. But, when you play a note without vibrato, 
I'm going to demonstrate here a little bit of Gregorian music. This is a prayer to St. John. Ut que ant laxis resonare fibris mi regestorum family to warum. There I sing without vibrato, without the voice-like quality, and I hope it sounds more spiritually infused than the previous piece. This is to do with the harp, that it has these pure, pure tones with the minimum of material sound. You hear the string in space. And I think that's one of the reasons the harp has long been associated with the angels, because the physical part of it is minimal and it doesn't have the vibrato voice characteristics that characterize the soul and the feelings that we have in our souls. Another thought is this. We know that in order to hear things we need ears, but do we hear music and voices and everything entirely through our ears? I don't think so. I could demonstrate that best today, probably, if I had an old, cheap aluminium saucepan. And if I was to scrape that very slowly with my nails, you can imagine that scraping sound on aluminium going on and on. Most people would instinctively hold their arms or feel that sound on their skin. It wouldn't be in the ears. I hope you uh, can Imagine that, me scraping a blackboard or the aluminium saucepan and the effects upon your skin. Well, I think that with musical instruments, they also are heard in different parts of us. The percussion instruments, the rhythms, we particularly hear in the body because our physical body is the home of many rhythms to do with respiration, circulation, um, the the pulse, our needs for day and night to sleep and wake. We are full of rhythms which vary. And when we hear the rhythms in music, it can affect us, particularly in the limbs and the hands. So the rhythm relates very much to our body. When we hear harmonies, these touch our feelings. The feelings are here affected, I think. They, they suggest feelings, moods. But when we hear a melody line, it's like a train of thought, like a story that is being played out which has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's like a, a sentence that resolves, like a story that, has, that makes sense. And so that is more something that we perceive through our thoughts. The thinking is related to the melody, our feelings are touched by the harmonies. And if it was the rhythm, this would affect our, our will and whether we want to dance or walk or get moving. Um, so that's how it affects us inwardly in some ways. Thoughts, melodies, feelings in the harmonies, the rhythms in our limbs. And now, how do the different instruments affect us? Well, I'll make some suggestions which I hope you can ponder and maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. It's my thought that there are three families of instruments. 
the wind instruments, the string instruments, and the percussion, drums and percussion family. All the instruments can be seen as derived from wind, strings, and percussion. So let's, let us imagine. If we had a beautifully competent string quartet here today, playing some string quartets, uh, I think it would be touching you like a stroking of the skin. That's what we hear when we think of those bowed strings. It strokes us on the skin. If we listen to a flautist playing, it connects very much with our respiration. With wind players, we tend to breathe. We feel the breathing of the players, their need to draw breath, the passion they're putting into it. We breathe in harmony with the, the musicians who are playing wind music. When we hear the drums, it affects us. We click our fingers, we tap our feet. We get moved in our rhythms by the percussion family. With the brass family of wind instruments, I think we hear them at a deeper level than the strings which are bowed. With brass, I think it goes into the muscles, into the, into the blood. It's something we feel more deeply than the string section. If we were to listen to a wooden xylophone, for example, played with mallets, I think the sound of those would be experienced more in the bones, deeper within us, further within us. Um, with the harp, where does that touch us? Well, many people have said to me that it's a very calming instrument, which suggests that these fine strings are really stretched like nerves, and they can calm our nerves, the strings of the harp. Many people have also commented that the harp is like water. Well, all the musical instruments can be related more or less strongly with the four elements, with earth, water, air and fire. So I think with drums and those things that are hit, you have the earthy substance, which is important. You're hearing the earth qualities with the harp. Yes, it is like the waters. Again, with the flutes and the wind instruments, you feel the air. You breathe, you feel the air moving through those instruments. And as regards fire, I think particularly with the bowed instruments, with the violin um, and so on, you hear the friction producing that tone. And in a way, nothing can be more fiery, can it, than a very vigorously played violin, which requires that friction to get the, the, the tone from the instrument. And here's another thing to ponder on the three the three realms from which sounds emerge. Imagine you're walking in the mountains. It's foggy, it's misty. You're a little bit lost, a bit disorientated. In the fog, in the mist, you hear a low sort of moaning sound. It's not very distinct and your first thought is that that sound is the wind through the trees or perhaps through a gap in the rocks. Your first thought is that sound, it's natural. You walk on, you hear it again, that mm, and this time it sounds a bit more like an animal perhaps. You wonder whether there is uh, some large beast making that noise. You become a little apprehensive. Mm, can it be an animal that I'm hearing here in the fog, in the mist, in this forest? Then you hear it again. 
And now you're sure it's an alpine horn. And you realize it's a musical instrument being played by someone, perhaps far away, perhaps quite close. But now you're sure you know what it is. The musical interval told you that it was produced by a human being. The previous sounds could have been produced by nature and all the sounds that are created by the elements rubbing together, moving against each other and with each other. The second could have been the soulful cry of an animal. And thirdly, you heard it as a musical instrument and knew that a human being was somewhere around. That's another way of illustrating how the sounds that we hear come from three distinct but always interrelated realms. And so, to finish, I'd like to play you a piece to take you across the waters. This is the Aran Boat Song. It's a Scottish melody and it's actually from a song about Mary Queen of Scots. She played the harp, as did many kings and queens of England, and she, at one point, to escape her half-sister, fled to the Isle of Arran to be with her uncle at Brodick Castle. Queen Mary's harp, by the way, is in the museum in Edinburgh, Scotland. So here is the tune, which I hope will have a watery quality. I have said that the harp is a very relaxing instrument, but in South America it's not. It's mostly played by men there, and uh, they play with a lot of fire. Here's a tune from Paraguay called Shigada. This is to welcome people to a party. Mm -hmm. 